Fidelis Care offers quality, affordable health coverage for children and adults of all ages and at all stages of life. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. Call 1-888-FIDELIS or visit fideliscare.org. Hello everyone, welcome to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Every week at this time, we're gonna take a look at our local college sports programs. We begin with the honor roll of local college athletes, brought to you by M&T Bank. At M&T Bank, we're listening, learning, and working hard to understand what's important to Western New York. It's what we've been doing since 1856. M&T Bank, understanding what's important. Coming in at number three, Gene Chikmakis of the U of R women's soccer team had two goals to help the Yellow Jackets get their first win of the year come against the 12th ranked Washington University of St. Louis. Colin Futko of St. John Fisher, the first year quarterback, filled in for the injured Matt Nathan, becoming the first freshman to start a QB for Fisher in 16 years. Pretty impressive debut, threw for 209 yards and three touchdowns. Fisher remained unbeaten at 5-0. and oh. And topping the list, Emma Jones of the RIT women's cross country team, profiled here last week, won the Mike Woods Invitational at Letchworth Park, breaking her own school record by six seconds. Time now for our local college spotlight athlete of the week. And for that, we go to Roberts Wesleyan, where Bill Pucko has the story of a true student athlete. At Roberts Wesleyan, they don't just pay lip service to the term student athlete. Consider the women's soccer program. Rostered players include biology, homeland security, and criminal justice majors. There are two in pre-med and seven in nursing. And another, Bella Matrevsky, a history major dabbling in pre-law. Well, I'm a very organized person, not with my room, but with schoolwork. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of been the key to it, but also just having, I really have a passion for history and all the classes I've taken, so that helps. Did we mention that Matrevsky is the Red Hawks' best player? Well, she is. Bella just recently passed the 70 career goal mark. She's among the top five in the school in all scoring categories and an All-American at the NCCA Division I level. This year she has five goals and two assists in just eight games to lead the team. Churchville Chile alum could have played Division I soccer with an offer to attend Wake Forest. She chose Roberts instead. I think it makes it a good fit because of how caring the teachers are, the coaches, and a big thing for me not going Division I was that I wasn't a number in the classroom and I wasn't just a number on the team where I had to perform a certain way and here I was treated like an actual person. Those sentiments echo those of her first year coach. Sarah McClellan spent the prior eight years as the head coach at Binghamton University, a Division I program. Um, I wanted to, to come to a school that's got small class sizes, you get to know your professors, people really care about you, you're not a number, and then on the field you're going to have a great opportunity to excel. And I was really looking for the perfect fit and I think um, you know, it, was, it was good timing and this is a great group of players to work with, so I'm really looking forward to continuing our season. That she sometimes has to make allowances for the student half of her coaching duties comes with the territory. Oh, if you're gonna miss if you're gonna miss practice for basket weaving, it's a no. If you're missing <laughs> practice for a lab or an opportunity to get an internship, it's a yes. So um, pretty common sense based of is this gonna help you? Is it important to your major? Then it's an absolute go kill it, just like we would on the field and we want to be uh, competitors and, and excel in every area of our life. Inheriting a player like Bella Matrevsky helps. Yeah, I mean, Bella's helped us immensely and to have her for a year, um, for my first year, means the world because she's been such a great leader. Um, we can kind of put the team on her shoulders sometimes and she's able to, to score important goals for us. Um, she's a great attacking player as well as a, a captain and an example on the team, so it makes my job a lot easier. Is soccer so important because you're good, or are you good because soccer is so important, do you think? I think they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, I 
I absolutely fell in love with it when I was four years old and played in my first Tykes game. Um, but, you know, it's just the love of the game that pushes you to be better and better and every little mistake pushes you to fix them and I don't know, I think it's the love of the game that pushes you to be better. Shortly after her soccer career ends here at Roberts Wesley and so will her college career. Bella graduates early in December to move on to the rest of her life. I mean, I'm excited for the next chapter. I'm sad about this one ending. Um, I'm hoping that I can continue to play soccer after um, or be involved in it in some capacity. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I'm excited though, whatever it brings. And head down that path to law school? Yeah, uh, I hear it's really hard, but you know, I'll take it as it comes. Bill Pucko from Roberts Wesleyan for the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. When we return, J.C. DeLass welcomes Brockport football coach Jason Mangone into the coach's corner. And later on, Kim Burnson has our Scholar Athlete brought to you by Dave. All that and more when the College Sports Beat continues. As we head to break, here's a look at the Nazareth Athletes of the Week brought to you by Nazareth College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the Geneseo Athletes of the Week, brought to you by SUNY Geneseo. Welcome back and thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Each week, J.C. DeLass from WYSL Radio will help us get to know an area coach better with the Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. The Fidelis Care Coach's Corner is presented by Fidelis Care. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. This is J.C. DeLass with this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner, and our guest this week is Jason Mangoni, who's the head football coach at the College of Brockport. Coach, you've been involved with the College of Brockport football, either as a player, an assistant coach, or a head coach, going on 20 years now. Do you think that helps you to relate to your players today? I think so. I mean, I've been here for uh, for the whole gamut, you know, and uh, from transferring in from a, a prior university and and getting the love of the game back uh, in terms of the football with uh, with head coach Rocco Salmo at the time, and and getting to know the campus and walking through all the hallways and all the buildings, um, going to different study halls and, and to the uh, to the tutoring center. So I've been in, involved in all the gamuts uh, that Brockport has to give and and have spent over half my life here. Do you have coaching mentors, people that you go to now for advice? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Len Jankwitz, who was my high school coach back at Lancaster High School, just outside of Buffalo. He's like my second father. Um, I, I call on him quite often. Um, you know, I already mentioned Rocco Salmon, who was who I played for and coached with for a very long time here. A lot of what he did, we still do today. So, uh, you know, a lot of the roots that I've been involved with with coaching and, and learning from somebody is involved with him as well. When you're out visiting high schools and recruiting, what kind of student athlete are you looking for to bring to the college at Brockport? Somebody that's competitive. And, and competition goes beyond just the playing field. It's in the classroom. So we strive here at the College of Brockport to have a, a team GPA better than the previous year. And we don't necessarily put a number on that, but we want to increase our, our GPA as a team every year. So if you're gonna be somebody that's competitive on the field, that's outstanding, that's what we want, but it, it goes beyond that. So the competitiveness in the classroom has to be there as well. You've had some special players here. You've got a kid now, running back Dan Andrews, terrific player. Do players like that help elevate your program? Oh, without question. They, uh, they not only you know, increase our production on the field, but they also want, they get kids to come here because they know who they are. Dan is well known throughout Rochester. And because of what he's done the last three years and now here being his fourth year, people around the state know who he is. So people want to play with great players. And those are the kids that we want. 
That old football saying, it's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy's and Joe's. Where do you fall in with that? Players versus schemes. Oh, I think it's a, a great combination of two, and some kids override the other. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Dan is a guy that we want to find a way to get the football to. So if it's going to be 12 seconds left in a game, odds are we're going to Dan rather than our best play. What's the best part about coaching here at the College of Brockport? I think being around everybody. Uh, we have a great administration here, led by Eric Hart in terms of athletics and above him with obviously the upper administration academically. But I think the coaches that have assembled here recently, uh, along with the ones that have been here for a while, I think everybody has a desire to be successful. I think everybody's willing to share ideas with what works for each individual team. And, and maybe what works for me will not work for necessarily men's basketball, but we're gonna share those ideas and, and take from each other what we will. And I know facilities is very important, especially for football, and you have great facilities here. Yeah, I, th I think we're second to none. You know, we have an indoor facility that we can go to to practice with nothing to change. So we don't have to say, well, now we got to cut out these X drills because we don't have room. We have actually more room inside our, our athletic facility than we do outside. And then when you look at our, our stadium, it holds 10,000 people. Uh, the lights are brand new. We can do spring practice now in the morning at 6 a.m. with the lights on. Uh, whereas before that, obviously, we were in the tennis courts uh, hoping to have some kind of a surface to, to run on. So facilities now are, are second to none. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thank you. And thank you for watching this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. Kim Burnson is up next with our scholar athlete. And later on, there's not much of a track record for the field hockey program at St. John Fisher, but that hasn't stopped the Cardinals from making history. We've got that and a whole lot more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. Before we go to break, here's a look at the RIT Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the Rochester Institute of Technology. As we come back from break, here's a look at the SUNY Brockport Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the College of Brockport. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave Digital Audio Visual Environments. Where can you go to get expert advice and installation on TVs, sound systems, and automation for your home, car, or business? Come see Dave. Digital Audio Visual Environment. Come see Dave.com. This week, our scholar athlete is Kenny Kish, a senior football player at the U of R. Making a difference is important to Kish. He serves as the co-president of the UR Relay for Life, helping to organize an event called Tackle Cancer. Together, he and the U of R football team raised over $9,000 for breast cancer research. On top of his charitable work, he was selected to the Liberty League All-Academic Team the last two years in a row. For his dedication to a cause bigger than himself, this week, Kenny Kish is honored as our scholar athlete. Brought to you by Dave, Digital Audio Visual Environments. Now with a look at our college calendar, here's Dave Yates. Here's our local college calendar for the week ahead. Tuesday kicks off with the Nazareth men's soccer team taking on Alfred State at 4 o'clock. Tuesday also sees a couple of big field hockey matchups with the U of R hosting William Smith and the Fisher Cardinals playing Union College, both those games starting at 6 p.m. Wednesday, Geneseo Field Hockey hosts Brockport at 4. Also on Wednesday, it's the Brockport Volleyball team hosting Nazareth on Senior Day. That one starts at 7. Friday, it is soccer. The Geneseo men playing Cortland at 3, and they host Oswego on Saturday at 1. Also Friday, the women of Roberts Wesleyan play host to the LIU Post Pioneers at 5 p.m. Saturday, Nazareth starts the swimming season like it always does with the Purple and Gold alumni event. Women's hockey at RIT next weekend, both Friday and Saturday. You can see the Tigers taking on Union College. And finally, also on Saturday, Brockport, their football team hosting Ithaca College. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff. That is our college sports beat calendar. And now here's how some Section 5 alums are doing at colleges outside of Rochester. It's a segment we call Postcards from College. Denzel Knight, formerly of Brockport, continues to make the most of his opportunities at Wagner, scoring two touchdowns, one rushing and one receiving in a 45-20 win versus Sacred Heart. 
Former Bishop Kearney star Ardell Brown has amassed 33 catches for 556 yards and 5 TDs in 5 games so far for Seton Hill. The Griffins are 3-2. Emily Wade of St. Lawrence via Mercy High School had a goal and an assist versus Bard. Emily has 14 points through 9 starts. And first year libero Alea Bolin at Syracuse is back on the court after a preseason injury kept her out of action. The Sutherland star had career highs versus Miami with 20 digs and 6 assists. Cuse is 3-3 three three in their last six after starting the year 0-8. Those are our postcards from college. Coming up next, our honor roll of teams and building a strong foundation at St. John Fisher. All that and more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat continues. As we head to break, here's a look at the Roberts Wesleyan Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Roberts Wesleyan College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the St. John Fisher Athletes of the Week brought to you by St. John Fisher College. Welcome back. Thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Feed. I'm Dave Yates. It is time now for our list of local college teams in the spotlight starting at number three. It's the Roberts Wesleyan women's soccer team. They beat Malloy 2-0 for their third straight win. They're now 5-3-1. In at number two, it's the Nazareth women's soccer team. They are 6-2-2 two two on the year, but they just won their first Empire 8 game, beating Utica 2-0. And topping the list, it's the Fisher field hockey team. They beat Ithaca College 3-0 for their seventh straight win. We've got a lot more to say about that team next. And now for more about the St. John Fisher field hockey team, it's time for our Spotlight Team of the Week. The Cardinals field hockey program started just six years ago, but that short history has not stopped this team from thinking big. Here's Kim Burnson. It's a team with a lot to be proud of. The St. John Fisher Cardinals field hockey team is following up a season filled with success, but there's still a long way to go in building a strong foundation. That starts with passing the torch. When Victoria Bothner took over the team in 2014, she hoped to bring some consistency to the young program. You know, this is, uh, this is the sixth season um, of the program history, and when I came in, the previous coach did a really nice job building the program, starting to recruit, um, you know, the right girls to come into the program, and starting to try to, you know, build tradition here. And now that we're six years in, and uh, we got the right chemistry, the, the traditions have started, the chemistry's there, and uh, we have a winning attitude. Bothner isn't new to the coaching scene. In fact, she has an impressive resume at the high school level with both Webster Schroeder and Gates Chilai, where she was named Coach of the Year in 2011. It seemed like all the pieces were in place for Bothner to take on a new challenge in her coaching career. You know, I, I played in college, and then when I, I graduated from Miami, I came back and I coached at, at the college level for a year, and then stepped away from field hockey for a few years because I became a mom. So then getting back into the high school scene was excellent. I loved it, um, but I was, you know, really hungry to get back into the um, college coaching. And when Fisher became available, I was ready to go for it. It only took one season under Bothner to have the team firing on all cylinders. Players felt the difference immediately. And you obviously being a senior were here during the coaching transition. What was that like? Um, it actually went really, really well. Um, everything that Coach has been doing has really just been like improving the team from year to year. And now even with Coach Metz, everything is just very like improved and more intense. But it's also really like happy and fun loving as well. It's kind of like we're all really competitive, but we want to have fun as well. So. From the seniors down, uh, you know, we have a really strong leadership right now from our senior captains. Our juniors and sophomores are working very well together, and the freshmen have come in and really have taken on a key role. Last year we had a really successful season, but this year I feel like everyone on the team knew that we had to like step it up a little, and we just needed to do something else to win more. 
Despite having 12 wins on their season, a new school record, and going 6-2 and two in their conference, their goal this year is to get further in their postseason and eventually win Empire 8s. It was uh, kind of like a, a sour sweet ending to our season because we did have a really good record, uh, but we didn't finish with a, with a championship, so um, a trophy. So, you know, hopefully this year the, the uh, ending will be a little different. Though the Cardinals are still building traditions of their own, they've proven that the team with the best record isn't always the team with the longest history. I think that this year we've just had a really, really great team dynamic and in past years we didn't have that as much as we do this year. I think that we're really effective with communicating, working together, working off each other's strengths and weaknesses and that's really made us have a quick start to the season and a really good start. This year alone I think um, every single win uh, we'll take and we'll be really excited about. Uh, we really are hoping to play well throughout the rest of the season. We really enjoyed beating Cortland. We love beating Nazareth. I mean I could go on and on um, but moving forward we have five really challenging games coming up and uh, we're just going to take one day at a time. So great season in 2015. What are the goals for this season? Um, to feel like we accomplished the goals we set when preseason started. Uh, you know, we, we sat together in our team locker room and put together our, our team goals, and we're just slowly checking each one of those off. Thanks everyone for watching. And a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fidelis Care, for making the College Sports Beat possible. We'll see you next week.